Hey, Shalom. First off, I want to start off by saying all praises, honor, and glory is due to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh by Hashem Kakadash. It's all praises to the world cause God, whose true name in Hebrew is Yahweh by Hashem, meaning in the name of Yahweh Shai, being the name of the only begotten Son. I also want to say double honors to the elders and apostles of Great Millstone and peace and mercy to the whole elect preachers, wearing the truth and sincerity on the brother Tazabah in the Great Millstone, Arizona camp. Lord, well, with another video to edify. And uh, I wanted to go on this uh, article. It says, Mega Drought, U.S. Corn Yields at Dismal Levels Compared to 2008. <clears throat> this article just came out on the 17th, right? <laughs> this article just came out on the 17th, so like you. Sick. And it's comparing comparing crop yields to 2008, right? So let's read a little bit on this. Is uh, natural news? The west West Coast might be getting drenched with uh, drenched in rain right now, but the Western Farm Belt, this includes states like Nebraska, Kansas, and Texas, is still starving for moisture. Many cornfields in these states are are now abandoned due to parched crops that have failed to produce. As, as expected, um, just uh, 79.2 million acres were harvested last year, a 1.6 million acre uh, decline. Oof. It says, in the smallest overall harvest in terms of acres since 2008. Right? And this is prophecy, man. This is prophecy. The Lord... Is breaking that staff of bread. It says, as a result, it says grain supplies are substantially lower than expected. There's more, uh, more to come for wheat and other crops that are uh, similarly, simmer, sim similarly dry as a bone, in desperate need and in desperate need of rain. Right, but this is this is prophecy. The Lord's breaking the staff of bread and corn, right, and wheat. Those are major crops. Right, they put corn in almost everything. Hey, right, from your high fructose corn syrups to, you know, corn mills, corn oil, they put put it in everything. And then you know you got your wheat goes into damn near everything as well. Right, they also use uh, I think it's uh, a process they will use the corn husks for uh, capsules or for certain medications and everything like that. So this is uh right this is prophecy coming to pass right because it's going to start affecting people the second as is 15 and 11 it says but I will bring them with a mighty hand and stretch out arm and smite Egypt with plagues as before and I'll destroy the land thereof and Egypt was plagued with all types of you know agricultural um agricultural uh, uh plagues that diminish the yield on on on, on crops Right, the scriptures talk about blights, right? Let's see if that's what I believe that's how you spell it. So I can hey, this Haggai one eleven and it says and I called for a drought upon the land and upon the mountains and upon the corn and upon the new wine and upon the o and upon the oil and upon that which which the ground bring forth and upon man and upon cattle and upon all the labor of of the hands all right this is all happening again there's another one I can't the scriptures talk about a, a moraine for I'm forgetting how the scriptures have it spelled out. <laughs> Salakia. So but but this is all prophecy. The Lord did these things in the past. And it tells you in Ecclesiastes. Let's get it real quick. Pull up a different Bible app. You just call Ecclesiastes one and nine. Ecclesiastes one and nine it says the thing that had been, it is that which shall be, and that which is done. Uh, it says, it says, and that which is done is that which shall be done. 
there is no new thing under the sun. All right. So the things that happened in the past that the scriptures talk about, these things are going to happen again. We just got a scripture in Haggai and 1 and 11 where the Lord called a drought upon everything. And we're, we're in the same times right now, man. All right. So things are getting cooked up. The Lord is uh causing this earth to hit, get, get those plagues in America greatly. All right. It says Egypt shall, verse 12, 2nd Ezra 15 and 12. Egypt shall mourn, and the foundation of it shall be smitten with the plague and punishment that the Most High shall bring upon it. All right? So, <laughs> this place is getting smitten by the plague and the punishment. Right? Breaking your 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 crop or harvest over years, that's a punishment from the Heavenly Father. All right? Because what? It's going to kick in famine, all out uh, rioting, right? People not being able to feed their kids. It's a terrible thing. Right, it says verse thirteen. It says, "They that till the ground, talking about these farmers, shall mourn, for their seed shall fail through the blasting in hell, and with fearful cons consolation." Right, the fearful consolation is that the weather is not going to be favorable. Everything's going to fail them. That's that's why all these farmers are starting to sell their farmland because they can't even recruit the money that they need off the farmland, and. <clears throat> All this processed food is making people buy the BS, which basically drives down the, 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 the cost of what those crops would really be. So people don't even have to use their crops like that. And then they're coming out with these GMO seeds, which are patented, right? So they can't even take all the money from the seed that they use and they grow because they got to pay some back to the person that owns the patent. <laughs> You know, this is this this is what it's set up as, but that that seed that seed is failing, man. That 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 breaking of the staff of the bread is here, and, and people are gonna start starving real soon, man. This is um, I'm gonna jump down in this second edge is fifteen. Jump down. Uh, I'll start at eighteen. It says, it says for because of their pride, the city shall be troubled. The houses shall be destroyed, and men shall be afraid. <clears throat> a man shall have no pity upon his neighbor, but shall destroy their houses with the sword and spoil their goods because of the lack of bread and for great tribulation. And that's what that's the effects of famine right there. All right, you got to worry about your neighbor coming into your house unannounced. All right? And all he's worried about is feeding himself and his kids. All right? And that's a dangerous man. It's a very dangerous man, and, and it's going to be a reality. All right, this is Isaiah 5 <laughs> and 10. It says, yeah, 10 acres of, I'll uh, start at 9. Mine, uh, it says, in my near it said, yeah, how hosts of a truth. Many houses shall be desolate, even great and fair without inhabitant. Yeah, 10 acres of a vineyard shall yield one bath, and the seed of a homer shall yield an ephod. Basically going into the, the crop yields dimension, and they said it right here in this article, all right? I'm going to try to remember to put it in the description. I said, uh, yeah, here it is. Let me just read this whole thing, all right? Many cornfields in the state are now abandoned due to parched crops that failed to produce as expected. Just 79.2 million acres were harvested last year. A 1.6 million acre decline, right? So that's 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 that a whole, a whole acre shall be on one bath. It's that diminishing crops, right? In the small, it says in the smallest overall harvest in terms of acres, right? Since 2008. So the food supply is going down. Right, and, and people have been stuck in their houses, getting fatter and fatter. Right, so they eat more because they ain't got shit to do, and and, and they don't have any hobbies. They they, they and when you come to America, man. People here they don't have any real hobbies or any real concern. They just do whatever the hell that they can in the moment and feed themselves constantly. So it's not like other places in the world where they they'll, they'll keep a garden. They'll find some something outside the house to do. All right, America is just you. You slave all day. You come home, and the only thing left to eat do is eat. 
right? So food prices are shooting up. The supply is going down. Inflation is hitting. All right, these farmers are going bankrupt because of how they're how much they're charging for the fertilizers now. All right, water, water droughts all here, so that's driving down the crops as well, which is reducing how much these farmers can sit here and actually sit on that land for. So it's it's killing people, man. It's killing people. All right, but but the Lord is breaking that staff of bread, man. This is Ezekiel five and sixteen. It says, um, it says, um, it says, when I shall, when I shall send upon them the evil arrows of famine, which shall be for the destruction. And that's exactly what the Lord is, is getting us ready for, because the one has gone out long enough for people to actually come to the Heavenly Father and do the right things. And they're not, right? They, they openly dis detest what the Lord set up. Here it is. 2023 and there's been articles coming out where it says the people are leaving the church and go straight to satanism because that's what the church was it's just a different form of satanism not right now boy no ruffles cut it out boy you ain't gotta breathe over me man it says um it, it says uh in which i will sin to destroy you and i will increase the famine upon you and i will break your staff of bread and that's what's happening all right and when when that food amount starts going down and people have it like right now, people in the UK are, are eating more and more processed food, which that's actually causing more pestilence, blood pressure shooting up. Right. Malnutrition, because those meals aren't made for you to actually be sustained off of. You know, you always got to go back to the actual real food to be able to have good health and, and people's health are going to decline. Right. In the dead of winter, it's a, this is a this is a this is a hellish scenario, man. It's Isaiah nine and twenty. It says, um, "I'll start. I'll start at nineteen. It says, uh, through the wrath of Yahweh of hosts, is the land darkened, and the people shall be as fuel for the fire. No man shall spare his brother. He shall snatch on the right hand." And he shall be hungry, right? This is why no man is going to spare his brother. Because that that hunger it says, and he shall eat on the left hand, and, it, and they shall not be satisfied, right? There's not going to be enough to go around. They shall eat every man the flesh of his own arm, right? That's, that's hey, cannibalism is coming back, right? Auto cannibalism being forced into a situation where you feel the only valuable option is to eat yourself. That's That's coming back. That's 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 a that's a bad way to go out, man. It's a limitation too. Eleven. It says, uh, "My eyes do fail with tears, my bowels are troubled, my liver is poured upon the earth, for the destruction of the daughter of my people, because the children and the suckling swoon in the street of the city. Why are they swooning? Right, basically walking around in that mournful state. Why? It tells you in verse twelve. It says, "They say to the mothers, where is corn and wine?'" Right, meaning that abundance. Right, it says when they swooned as the wounded in the in the street of the city, when their soul was poured out into their mother's bosom. Right, because what there was no food to eat. Go to the Book of Kings, I believe it's a uh, Second Kings the sixth chapter, First Kings the sixth chapter, when it goes into the the mother that bore her, her child. This this is the reality that America's got about to get sat in, and, and if you're on a wrong side with the lord hey if you were in, in in the midst of the wicked balance that's what you got to deal with to see your kids in that state and and, and when these things start hitting we're going to tell you just like the king said hey if the lord don't help you how shall we our hands are going to be off because we gave you the words that you needed but it wasn't enough for you <laughs> It says, um, Second Ezra 16 to 17, Wo Woe is me, woe is me, who would deliver me in those days? The beginning of sorrows and great mornings, the beginning of famine and great death, the beginning of wars and the power shall stand in fear, the beginning of evils. What shall I do uh, when these evils shall come? 
Behold, famine and plague, tribulation, and anguish, or sin and scourges for amendment. Right? So these this 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 famine, right? This plague is getting sent for an, a scourge for amendment. But right? But for all these things they shall not turn away from their wickedness, nor be always mindful of the of the scourges. Right? People are gonna sit here and be fully persuaded to just go further in wickedness in these times, and this is how we know that the Lord is gonna be justified because even when the plagues start hitting tough and heavy and you can't get out of them people aren't going to repent they're not going to see a reason they're just going to keep going in that way because what they have nothing to do with the lord right but um just a quick lesson i don't want to make it too long lord willing was edified i'm gonna say call law yahweh by shim yahweh shai by shim